You know, Donnie, uh, there's a whole generation of people that's never really hunted squirrels, isn't it? Younger people. Oh yeah, this this looks like a tamale that I'm going to enjoy. Welcome to A Sportsman's Life. We're so glad you tuned in to join us for another exciting real-world outdoor adventure right here on A Sportsman's Life. Well, friends, you are about to go on a little trip with me. I'm in the old GMC here loaded up, and I'm going to introduce you to somebody that I think you're going to really enjoy visiting with on our show, Mr. Donnie Lynch. Now, there's not a lot of folks like Donnie around anymore. He's an outdoor man from way back. He's trapped and hunted, and Lake Cato is down in uh, kind of southeast Texas, east Texas. Uh, it's the only natural lake in Texas. Well, Donnie lives right down on the lake, the Cypress Swamp Lake down there. And he, he was a fishing guide for a long time, and I've known him for probably 25 years. But he's made his living in the outdoors, hunting and trapping and guiding fishing trips. His passion, though, is uh, squirrel dogs. He's raised some champion squirrel dogs, and he still uh, breeds the dogs and hunts with them. So we're going to go down and Mr. Donnie Lynch, his, the name of his dogs is Lynch Dogs, D-A-W-G-S. We're going to go down and hunt with him. Mostly, I'm not so worried about killing a bunch of squirrels. Maybe we'll have some good luck, but he's got a little time Donnie does to spend with us today. I want you to see his dogs, and I want you to listen to some of the things that Donnie's got to say. I think you're going to enjoy it. So let's fire up the old GMC and head out. What do you say? <laughs> say hello to everybody because there's a bunch of people right now watching us me and you folks this is mr donnie lynch my friend and i'm gonna tell you i don't know anybody that knows more about hunting squirrels with dogs than you donnie you've been a dog a squirrel dog trainer and raiser and hunter for as we say in east texas for a coon's age hadn't you yeah i've been doing this for a while <laughs> Well, we, it looks to me like a good place. I bet it's been cold for a few days, Donnie, and now it's it's warmed up. If I was a squirrel, I'd be moving around myself, you know? Yeah, I feel like they're going to be moving. Yep. They're out, they're out doing it right now. When they go out, I guess, you know, if we had a stool, we could just sit down. Well, I see a... Sometimes there's a log handy, but... I see a stool right up there. Look at that log, Yeah, honey. and there's the old men. <laughs> That's exciting. She don't want them to get away from her. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Back in the day, you had so many hound hunters, and then when they started to hunt squirrels a little harder, they they liked a houndy type dog, so that was where that cur come in. You know, hound people like big dogs. There ain't nothing wrong with that. And then, as the land got posted, more and more, less places to hunt. And then the men like us and the older men, we 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 went to the little dog. 
and they could hunt those little spots and not get way out of pocket and get across the fence and irritate other people and stuff. So most of the squirrel hunters that hunt these dogs, they they really more courteous than some of the deer hunters because if I go to the woods where they hunters, well I just drive down the road to the back and it's gonna find me another place. Yep. And uh I've had real good success getting along with people. You know, Donnie, uh, there's a whole generation of people that's never really hunted squirrels, isn't it? Younger people. Yeah. Where people set 60 or 55 plus. Did you hear a bark? Yeah, she's barking on the tree a little bit. Okay. She, she might have it. Let's go check it out. It's hip. Go hip her. I'm going to have to put some bullets in here. Scoot around in. Get the load to go and you can't be on them. Folks, we're in some thick cover right here. Yeah, I see them. Huh. Come here, Stubby. Whoop! Whoop! Come on! Whoop! Whoop! Come on, boy. Come on. Good boy. They come when called. That's important, too, Donnie, if you... You know, yeah, stay in public. contact with them, right? Yes. Donnie, how do folks that want to talk squirrel hunting with you or squirrel dogs, how do they contact you, buddy? Well, I'm easy to get. They just call me on my number, 903-601-0673. Uh, or they can text me. Yeah. But I ain't much on the texting. <laughs> I hear but you. I will text a little bit. Lynch Dogs, D-A-W-G-S. Yes. Right. Well, Donnie, it's been an absolute blast. I don't know when I've had more of a relaxing time out in the winter woods. And by golly, we're still hunting, folks. We had, we're back, almost back up to the truck where we started from. So I guess we can head on back there and load them up for now, right? Yeah, yeah. Go to another spot. Yeah. Well, Donnie, there are a whole bunch of squirrel nests around here. And yeah, there's plenty of squirrels. They just ain't stirring yet. Hadn't started moving there. Right over there a while ago, old Stubby, I think, was the one that, he, he smelled where one had been on the ground, didn't he? Yeah. Yep. That little dog, that little red spot, one, her name is Ninny. Ninny, okay. Ninny, and this one's name is Stubby. Stubby. And the old brindle puppy is named Colsey. Colsey, yeah. See, I named her age old Todd Coles. <laughs> well, you know what, Donnie? When I was a boy up here in Red River County, we're so far back in here, now, that's why you, they used to say they had to pump daylight in to us. You ever heard that? Yeah, and bring cigarettes in with carrier pigeons. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a, another one, uh, I won't use the exact term, folks, but have to, so far back in the woods, we lived so far back in the woods when I was a boy, they had to scrape owl doo-doo off the clock to time, find out what time it is. Have you heard that one? No. no. <laughs> uh, All right, I don't know when it's, after three or four days of ice, oh, those squirrels, they're going to be moving around. If, if, they, if we don't see a squirrel, which we're going to, uh, it's a joy being out here, man. You know? Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is a good place to go. It is. Because, you know, you can see all the creation. And yep. You, you can just be thankful that, that the Lord uh, let us enjoy some of this beauty he created for us. That's the that's exact fact. Donnie. I love the outdoors. It's just therapeutic to you. It is. It yeah. is. I kind of feel sorry for people that don't love the outdoors, Donnie. You know, because yes. you and I both, we've been kicking around the outdoors a long, long time. Kind of probably parallel paths a lot of the way. Yeah. You know? Yep. Brought to you by Dallas Safari Club, conservation, education, and hunter advocacy. Hornaday, accurate, deadly, dependable. Taurus Firearms, maker of the Raging Hunter.
Well, Larry, here we are at the Dallas Safari Club, and we have just wrapped up our book signing, right? We have. It's been an absolutely great show. Of course, DSC is such a fabulous organization and such a fabulous show. Mm -hmm. And next year, you'll have to come to Atlanta to see us because they're tearing down this building. So right we'll here. be there, but we'll be back in five years, probably pretty close to where we are right now, Luke. Exactly. Tell us how to, tell our folks, our friends, how to order our books. Our books, the one that you and I did, Campfire Talk, which is a compilation of several stories written about hunting, fishing, everything from alligator gars to stripers to catfishing to uh, turkey hunting to deer hunting to a few other things. That one is available through either catfishradio.org or larrywysoon.net. And all you got to do is go to the little icon that Jeff Rice, who happens to be our partner in the uh, Sportsman's Live TV show put together for us, but you can go there and click on the little icon and you can order them right there you know, on either at catfishradio.org or at larrywysoon.net. A Sportsman's Life is also brought to you by Mossberg, American Built, American Strong, The Wyo Steakhouse, Catch and Release Apparel, AGM Global Vision, your go to for thermal hunting scopes and spotters. Pyramid Air, your one-stop shop for everything air guns. This is Mr. Whitehead. First trip to Lake Texoma. How do you like it? I absolutely love it. I've been all around this lake, and I've always heard about you guys, and I knew I wasn't going to go fishing until I got to go fish with y'all. So it took a little time for us to get there. We're going to get another one. This is fantastic, by golly. Absolutely. absolutely. Great fishing in the world. Well, folks, it's your old buddy Luke, and we're going to make some tamales today. I thought you might want to take a little look before we get started of my cooking area. My little camp back here behind the house in the, in the trees. Have a lot of fun out here and do a lot of riding out here on this porch. But let me take you over here to what we call the cooking shack. There's my old pickup takes me on a lot of adventures. It's been taking me on adventures for many years. The old GMC. Now here is what my buddies refer to as the cooking shack. <laughs> We're going to get in here and I'm going to make some tamales uh, a way that you've probably never made them. Here's my smoking text in here. Okay, friends, enter my ultra-modern cooking facility here, the, quote, cooking shack. <laughs> now, here is the skillet with the pork that is cooked down to a thick consistency here. Okay, that's guy. I actually mixed a little garlic and cumin with that. Season that pork like you, like you would like your pork to taste when you make a tamale. Garlic, cumin is a must, a little salt. Now, of course, here is the corn shucks. I've had them in hot water for a couple of hours. And, of course, the masa that you need. I use beef broth. I want to keep it simple. Now, here is our masa mix. Now, this can be made a lot of different ways, but I have about, oh, a half a cup of oil. Mexican folks usually use lard. They use lard a lot, but... I don't. You can use Crisco. You can use lard. It's great. I just don't have it available. Cooking oil works just fine. But you want a good uh, consistency that will spread on one of these tortillas, on one of these uh, uh, corn shucks here. So corn shuck has got a rough side and a fine side to it there. I usually just use it just the way it comes from the cob shaped. I'll ladle that on there. But in, in the mix here, folks, uh, cumin, 
a little red pepper, I like to put that in there, salt, about two tablespoons of baking powder. So these do not have to be perfect, folks, but here's what you're looking for. A little head space right here from the end of the uh, corn shuck, and then room enough here to fold over. So now we'll ladle some of the uh, tamale meat in the middle. Pretty simple, huh, folks? So here's the masa down in the middle. Little head space here so when it swells up it won't come outside your outside the shuck and then you've got room back here to fold. So now I'm simply just going to fold this over and then we'll just fold the other side over that like that and then the top the top just folds back over. Now there is your tamale ready to go in the pan right there. Pretty simple, huh? So I'm going to make about 19 more of these. And here's the way we're going to do it. I may as well show you this right now. Rather than use a double boiler, we're going to stack them in these aluminum pans right here. And we're going to bake them in the smoking text. For, you can bake them in the oven at this stage. But we're going to layer all these in here. It may probably take two pans full to do them all. But uh, I'm going to put a little water down in the bottom of the pan, and then I'm going to wrap the pan tight with foil. And it will do the same thing as a double boiler. I've done this several times. It will actually steam these tamales. So let me assemble all of them, and then we'll wrap them up and stick them in the oven. Well, folks, here are about half of our tamales. They're all wrapped up in the corn shucks and seasoned up well. Now, here's where my Mexican buddies would probably say, Lucas, what are you doing wrong? <laughs> I'm going to put some water down in this aluminum pan. Not a lot, maybe just enough, and sprinkle some water over the top of these. Then I'm going to wrap it in foil, and I'm going to bake it instead of using a double boiler like the tried and true uh, the Mexican folks do. So it's a little different. I've done this two or three times, and they turn out really good this way. I won't say they're any better than the steamed ones, but they are honestly a little bit, maybe a little bit more dry. So this is going in the smoking text after the water is added and after the uh, foil is put on top for about an hour at 250. Now if you want to cook, cook them like this or bake them in the oven in your house, that'll work just fine too. Actually, I may take the other pan of these in the house. I would think about 325 degrees for about 45 minutes, then I would check them. So let's start cooking our tamales now. Tightly wrapped in foil in the smoking text, and I'm going to set the thermostat on this at about 250. And we're going to let these things go for about 45 minutes. I think it's probably going to take more like an hour, maybe a little bit over an hour for them to get thoroughly done. But they will, they'll steam in this uh, pan. And this does save a lot of time when not having to fool with the double boiler when you're making tamales. So let's give them some time, then we'll pop the top on these after about 50 minutes, maybe an hour, and we'll check them out. Okay, here we are inside the elaborate cooking facility here. Let's pick one of these things out and just kind of... Oh yeah, this, this looks like a tamale that I'm going to enjoy. Let's take a little bite. I want to make sure that... Let me test this out for us. Mm -mm -mm. That smoked pork, you can see that smoked pork in the middle. Now granted, my Mexican buddies are probably going to say, that doesn't look exactly like the tamales that we cook. But I'll tell you what, the flavor is there. Folks, I hope I showed you something that you didn't know, a way to make tamales without a, oh, a long cooking process. The flavor is really, really good. I think you'd enjoy these. Folks, this segment was brought to us by Gearhead Archery, Smoke Intex Electric Smokers, Snaplock Hunting Blinds, Y.O. Ranch Headquarters, Ultramatic Feeders, and Catfish Pro. Tune in next week for some more real-world outdoor adventures right here on A Sportsman's Life.